thought if I put my hair back for this video, it wouldn't get in my face. But it's still in my face, yo. Anyway. <laughs> Well, hello there. I'm Nusha, also known as Ferocious and Pretty Pens, and welcome back. For today's video, I want to switch up gears a little bit. In the previous video that I filmed, we talked about the Scribo Ladada, and that is a fairly expensive pen. It's $500 plus dollars depending on where you live and inflation. <laughs> I don't know. But for today's video, we're going to talk about the Caveco Perkeo. I think it's important to feature the full gamut of different kinds of writing utensils in the fountain pen world from economical value add type situations all the way up to the super limited edition you don't want to use it but you're going to use it anyway because you bought it. <laughs> So we're going to swing over into the affordable realm for today. And this is between 15 and 18 US dollars. This is something that I think it's a, a great pen and it's one that if you throw it in your daily carry-all, whether it's a backpack, purse, whatever, that you're not going to have heart palpitations or if you travel with this and you leave it in a hotel you're not gonna freak the frick out <laughs> not that I've ever done that before I really have it or have I um, but I think that there's some great things about this pen and I want to tell you about it so if you're interested in that then keep watching alright so here are the Perkeos up close and personal I don't even remember the, the colors these are named I think this is breeze teal breeze and just pink, but as you can see, it has Caveco on the cap there, and it has this sort of uh, faceted ish texture, and it also has Caveco very similar to the sport on the top of the cap there. And the other thing you'll notice is the back of the pen, this is actually open. So there is airflow in and out of there, so you cannot eyedropper this pen unless you want to take some tight lock or super glue or something like that and seal that off for yourself. This is not something that's going to be eyedroppered out of the box. In other news, it's a slip cap. Hey, and again, I have ink all over my hands, which I'll explain in a second. My hands are all inky because I have been doing so many ink one pagers and ink swatches. I have a backlog of hundreds of ink samples and bottles of, of brand new inks that I haven't even used yet that have just been sitting collecting dust and taking up space in my kitchen because <laughs> that's where I put things. I finally have gotten around to it. So depending on the color of ink that I'm using, it either looks like I killed a Smurf, which is not cool because my hands have blue all over them, or um, I just, my hands look like gremlin hands. Gremlins that have been fed after midnight. If you get the reference, if you know, you know. So, the other thing too is it has a triangle grip section. If you do not like triangle grip sections, you will not like this. I don't mind triangle grip sections because I learned to write with a Lamy in the very beginning, which has a triangle. Does it have a triangle grip section? I feel like it does. If I'm lying, I'm not trying. But uh, if you don't like triangle grip sections, you definitely won't like this. But it is a full-size pen on posted. And posted, it can be posted, it becomes even bigger. So if you have ginormous gargantuan hands, this is going to be okay for you. Versus the Caveco Sport, which I have mine over here. I'll do another review specifically on the Caveco Sport. You can eyedropper this, and this is something that most people, even myself, uh, have to, to post in order to use it comfortably. So if the size of it is something that you're worried about, and no triangle grip section on this one, then 
this is something that you could use. And this also is lighter than the Caveco Sport. And this comes in two nib sizes, a medium and a fine, which I have both of. So we have the fine, which is the pink one, and we have the medium, which is the teal breeze one. So I have both of them, and this also, huh, I'm gonna be like 80s style and contrasting. It does open up and it takes a standard international uh, converter or cartridge. And the cool thing about this too is you know that you have closed it because it has a tactile sort of closure and it might even click. I'm not sure. Let's see if we can hear it. No, you can't hear it. <laughs> It was like a fart that was silent but deadly. Anyway, <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, oh, and you cannot replace or interchange the nib in this. With the Caveco Sports, there is a nib number that is called the 060, I believe. And with the Caveco Sport, you can pull out that nib and replace it with the 060. This, you can't do that. I haven't tried, but I did some research, and Google says you can't do it. And if Google says you can't do it, then probably you can't do it. But if you know different, feel free to leave it in the comments. This is the Coeco. Perkeo. So in my last video, I didn't speed up or edit any of my writing and I found that that actually saved me a bunch of time and hopefully you are here for seeing what real-time handwriting looks like because I quite thoroughly enjoyed being that lazy and just uh, talking to the camera. I think this is how you spell it. Per K O. I spelled it wrong. Oh well. Too bad. And this is actually the me D um Wah. Hopefully I'm in focus. If I'm not in focus, then hopefully I just fixed it. That's the medium. And the thing about these nibs on the Cavecos is that they have a little bit of spring to them. Not so much the medium, but you'll see it with the fine when I bust that one out. The other thing, too, to know about Caveco in general is that they're not the wettest nibs in the world. It's not like what I showed you guys when I did my Scribo review. That is redonkulous in how wet it is. This is Sailor... You're, uh, and this is Hannah. This looks awful. Uh, just go with me here. This was not planned. This is all ad lib. 
So that's that. That's the medium. Oh, and I forgot to dot my eye up there. So let me pop this up close and personal so that you guys can see it. Uh, as you can see, there you have it. That's the medium. And this is a new ink to me, and it is a confusing AF ink for me because on some papers it shows up purple, on some papers it shows up more blue like it is here, and it also has a little bit of a sheen to it. So it's still a cool, super cool ink in my opinion. Okay, now let's move on to the fine. And I'm not going to write, well, to keep it consistent, this is the go, boop. And again, if I am misspelling that, uh, too bad, because I have committed. It's written in pen. And this is the fine, because everything's fine. And with this, you can actually eke out a little bit of line variation. So let me just show you guys real quick with normal pressure, which should never push a fountain pen too far, and how are you supposed to do too far unless you push it? But this one, you can eke out a little bit of line variation when you press really, really hard. The nibs on these are hard as nails, so in order to eke that a little bit out, you gotta press kinda hard, but if ever there was one to press hard on, it is this more economical sort of a fountain pen. So there you have that. And this is Terra What's this? Terra I think it's Nishi. Hope I got that right. And it's just sock you in the eyeballs. Prink. Wee. Oh, and I forgot to do the, the the boopage. Again, not a very wet writer. But there you have it. Let me just pop this up here so that you can get a look at that. So that's the medium and that's the fine. So there is a difference between the medium and the fine. And hopefully you can see it. And that's that. So hopefully, and that is that. Now I guess I'll just turn it back over to myself in the studio. Whee! Well, all right, I've told you a little bit about the pen. We've done the entire writing sample. So we're gonna do this PowerPoint style. I'm gonna put the pros about this pen on this side and the cons on this side, and then we'll wrap up and call it a day. So the first pro is that it's under 20 US dollars at the time that I'm filming this. I think that's a steal for what you get. A writing instrument that is cartridge or converter filled so you can put any ink that you want in it, standard international. It has a springy nib. It's not a super wet writer so that means if you are in a crazy situation where you don't have fountain pen friendly paper <laughs> near you, this might do okay. If you're out in the wild, if you will. 
next thing about this is that it is not a very heavy pen. So if, if you need a lighter pen, this will be for you. And lastly, it comes in those two nib sizes, a medium and a fine. Now over here on the con side, it comes in only a medium and a fine and you can't swap out the nib. The nib that's in there is the nib that's in there is the nib that's in there. Did you get that it's the nib that's in there? The next thing is that it has a triangle grip. If you don't like those, that's not going to be for you. So maybe you do like those and that might be in on the pro side, but we're going to put it over here in the cons. Also, you can't eyedropper it out of the box. Now that might be an issue for some of you, might not be an issue for others. I just... I never have eyedroppered this or had the desire to. That's so much ink that I would be writing a manuscript of some sort. <laughs> so it's not an issue for me. I'm fine with cartridge or uh, converter filled pens. No issue there. And then lastly, um, what else is a, lastly, what, what's, what else is a con? I, I can't think of anything else. If I think of it, I'll put it on the screen. Well, all right. So now that we've done the writing sample, talked about the pros and cons, what do you think of this pen? Do you have one? Have you tried one? Do you have any desire to try one because of the price point? Sound off in the comments. I hope you are all having a great day wherever in the world you may be. If you haven't clicked that subscribe button, go ahead and do so now because you know you want to see more of this and this. Or maybe you don't, and I'll never do that again. <laughs> but hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I have new videos coming out. Because I'm back, baby! <laughs> and don't forget, keep writing. should never do that ever again. So it's 50 some odd degrees here in the, the beautiful state of Colorado in the US and it's shorts and flip-flop weather in my world and I love it. I'm sick of snow, I'm sick of slush, I'm sick of ice, I'm sick of anything that is below freezing point. So I will take it. Okay, bye!